And what it's doing, it's separating the range of the data set, of a univariate data set. It's putting the, the entire range into these discrete intervals. Each interval is a bin, and it's showing you the counts, the number of observations in that fall in that range. So your view of the shape is going to be affected by how many bins you have. And the default apparently is uh, 9, looks like 9. So you can, you can change that with the breaks argument. If I say histogram Nile breaks 15, that will draw, that will create 15 bins. And indeed, it's giving us a different picture, a different view. This looks a little different. And note you can toggle forward and backwards in uh, our studio it creates you you can't show two graphs together unless you you can jury rig it but what it does do it creates like a scroll a memory scroll so you can always go back to previous plots when we increase the bins we do get a different view of the distribution it becomes more continuous looks more like a continuous function. Okay, so there's other things we can do with the graphics. Uh, very good graphics in R, uh, particularly lattice. Lattice is good for multivariate graphics, and we'll, we'll do a lot of that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the different data structures. I've gone on and on. Um, this might be a good place for a break, 15-minute break. Anybody have any questions or want to say anything? I, I, I don't mean to just talk endlessly, but I will if you don't stop me. Any questions? Let's, let's take a 15-minute break here. And um, I will start the timer. There's a built-in timer. Uh, just before we get back into uh, the scripts, so I, I don't forget at the end of the class, let me just show you a couple of things. Here, here's the material for today. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. In the first day, normally, I, I give out uh, some documentation that I think is helpful. It's not meant just to fill up this folder. The, the R documentation is really, it's good in, in, in this way. It's very concise. It's also written by the people on the core development team. It uh, comes out with a new version with each release twice a year, so it's current. Particularly the intro, if you're new to R, the intro, uh, it's not, I wouldn't even call it a manual. It's not a manual. It's only about 100 pages long. But they know what to what to say. They, they know what you ought to be exposed to quickly. So this one particularly, you can go through the first 30 or 40 pages and it's like all of their documentation, there's a lot of examples. They have script and so you can interactively run the script as you're reading the text. And again, I, I can't say anything but give it a lot of praise. They've been doing this a long time and they know what to tell you first. And it's short. It's not just something you have to wade through for hour after hour. So you have that. The R language is about programming. It's about the programming language itself. So I thought that one was appropriate um, for this course. The X EXT extensions, this is for writing. The other one is for, this is the definite, the unique things about the R language which is important to programming. And we'll, we'll make frequent reference to this, I, I tell you. And then this is about um, packages and extensions. Now, what else do we have here? Um, there's some slides, and I don't think we'll get to the basic data structures today. We'll pick up on that quickly. The primitive data types, we'll pick up on that first thing when we next week but uh, there is an exercise and I just want to show it to you before I forget it it's it's easier than it looks I ask you to write a function that can do this that can create a uh, compare two samples to see if their means are significantly different from each other 
So it's just like a student's t-test, but it uses pooled variants. And, you know, when you start seeing Greek letters, my first reaction is my eyes kind of glaze over and I go, no, I can't do this. This is really deceptively simple to, to program in a function, and we'll show you how to create functions today. Um, and in fact, I give you the steps down here. All you have to do, here's our header. This is the header for our function. All you have to do is fill in the body with statements, one line after another, that accomplish these things, these tasks. And if you can do do these, you've 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 created the function. So it's much easier than you would think, even though it looks scary. And likely we'll extend this in exercises in subsequent days. Even if you can't, you give a try at this and it's too hard or you don't have time. I will try and distribute the answer next week so that you can you can continue. You can pick it up and then try and do the next part if you care to. But I, I'll try to give you at least one, one or two exercises every week so you have something to, to chew on. And so this, this is the one to start with. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go back to our... So we're looking at interactive mode and we're looking at the, the data types. Now, scalars, I already mentioned, really don't exist. Here's a scalar. We assign the, the numeric 8 to x, and we see 8 up here. But x is still a vector. Now, a vector is an, a sequence of elements that must be the same primitive type. They don't have to be numbers. They could be characters or strings. The type is a string. Sometimes it's called text, but it's really a string data type. If you have a string, if you have a character and a vector, they must all be ve they must all be characters. You can't you can't mix them. Okay, so here we create a vector. This is numeric again, and we look at it. So it's this vector five, twelve, thirteen. Length is a reserve function that tells you how many elements there are. So it returns the value of 3. Mode returns its primitive data type, which is numeric. Here we create a variable of string data type. The string is ABC. We can execute, or as they say in R, operate the length function on a string vector. So what's the length? It's only one element. It's the element that is the string ABC. It's not three elements. If we say what's the mode, the mode is character. We can, let's create a second one. Here we're combining, using the combine operator, combine these two elements. So we put that into Z. Take a look at Z. Z. Z is a vector of two elements. And Z has a length. The length is two. Z has a mode. The mode is character. Again, vectors have to be the same type. If you try to mix a vector, what happens if we try to mix a vector? Let's say W and the first element will be the character B and the second element will be the number 2. Let's see what happens when I do this. It gives me an error. It won't do it. Now, often what it will do is it will coerce them. It will force one to be the same type as the other. For example, if I say I do this, if I say B, uh, W is this, and then I say Y, Y is this, and then I say Z, etc., etc., 
except you know what the reason why it gave me the error is because you need to use the C so we'll create a vector W we'll create a vector Y and then we'll create a vector Z that will be the combine of W so let's do this so here's W take a look at W here's Y take a look at Y now I try and create a vector Z which is the combine of W and Y what happens it works I don't get an error take a look at it it has coerced it has changed the numeric to a character it can't change the the character to numeric it makes no sense to try and make a B a number it can't do it so it does instead it does what it can do which is change the numbers to characters because a vector must be all of the same type if we run length on it that works it's got four elements if we run mode that works its character so R in the background, and sometimes this is your friend and sometimes it's not, will try and fix your mistakes and coerce them into something meaningful that's consistent with the syntax rules. Okay, uh, now here's a well-kept secret about R. R has excellent text manipulation capabilities. It's not regarded in that way. It's regarded as the premier statistical programming language but in fact it's really really good at, um, at dealing with um, uh, uh, text text mining or uh, normal normal expressions or any sort of uh, text-based searches um, for example we have these functions paste there's a number of functions string manipulation functions paste tries to will take whatever arguments you give it and we'll try and combine them all into one string so if we take these three elements we try and paste them together and then we look at what we get out of it we get one element and it's simply uh, put them together into one element but it separated them by one character note up here in my workspace it's not too bad but you're what will happen as you do this is your workspace will accumulate junk and you need to clean it out every now and then especially when you start writing functions okay string split is a text manipulation it will by default in this case it will so here's u right u is our vector a b c blank d e blank f string split will operate against u and will try and separate this into three elements separated by these spaces but string split has another characteristic that's very important let's look at the result string split returns a list it returns a list so look at the when we express what object the the uh, the statement the return from the string split function note the it looks funny we get this double subscript lists are data elements or objects lists are structures that consist of components and list is very versatile list is your probably your most useful data structure each component can be any different data type of different length and different types lists are heterogeneous data structures very good for collecting the returns of very complicated functions and putting them in one object as we'll see lists are very useful we'll come back to lists later okay so let's go on and finish our whirlwind tour of some of these structures the matrix is another important data structure so we've looked at vectors we've looked at lists very briefly a matrix is just simply a two by two dimensional array it's the same it's a matrix in math that's what it is it's a two dimensional array columns and rows where the columns and rows are of the same length not square but you, a column all the columns are of the same length all the rows are of the same length uh, classically it is numerical numeric 
but it doesn't have to be. Most of the books on R will tell you that a matrix in R must be numeric, uh, but that's not strictly true. You can't.